हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू डाउट फोरम दिस क्वेश्चन इज अ स्टूडेंट स्केट्स अप अ रैंप दैट मेक्स एन एंगल 30 डिग्री विद हॉरिजॉन्टल ही और शी स्टार्ट्स एट द बॉटम ऑफ द रैंप विद अ स्पीड v0 एंड वांट्स टू टर्न अराउंड ओवर अ सेमी सर्कुलर पाथ x y z ऑफ रेडियस कैपिटल r ड्यूरिंग व्हिच ही और शी रीचेस अ मैक्सिमम हाइट h एट पॉइंट y from the ground as shown in the figure and we can assume that the energy loss is negligible and the force required for this turn at the highest point is provided by his or her weight only then there are four options given and we have to find the correct ones this is the given figure in the figure it is been said that at the beginning of the ramp when the ramp is just starting the velocity of that student is v0 and at the end of this ramp there is a semi circular path x y z and this point y is the highest point of this ramp and its height is h from the ground if we look into this figure we will find that as the student is moving the height is continuously increasing at the beginning of this ramp the height was 0 and at the highest point that is y the height is h so one thing is clear that there is a change in height and we all know that the potential energy of an object is a function of its height one thing is also mentioned in the question that there is a negligible loss of energy it means the total mechanical energy of this object at two different point during this whole motion would be same so the total mechanical energy would be conserved and we all know that the mechanical energy of an object is the sum of its kinetic energy which is given by mv square and the potential energy which is given by mgh if we name the starting point of this ramp as a so what we can do we can simply apply the law of conservation of mechanical energy at point a and at point y so at point a the total mechanical energy would be given by this formula and at point y the total mechanical energy would also be given by the same formula so in this formula the mass of that object is constant the only variables are the velocity and the height at point a the velocity is given to us and its value is v not but the velocity at point y that is the highest point is not known to us so what we can do we can simply assume that the velocity at point y is vy now if we apply the law of conservation of energy it means that the total mechanical energy of point a that is the mechanical energy a this would be equal to the mechanical energy of point y the total mechanical energy of point a is the sum of its kinetic and potential energies so the kinetic energy at point a would be half time mass into velocity and the velocity of point a is given as v0 so it's a square plus the potential energy of point a would be zero because at the beginning the height from the ground is zero so when we put the value of h as 0 in this equation so the potential energy of point a would be 0 now coming to point y the total kinetic energy of point y would be given by half into mass into velocity the velocity we have assumed its value as vy so it's a square plus the potential energy is mgh because height is known to us and its value is h so this m is common so this will cancel and the value would come out to be v0 square by 2 would be equal to vy square by 2 plus gh so in this equation this vy is something which we have assumed so we have to find out its value to find out the value of vy that is the velocity of that object at point y what we can do we can use the the condition mentioned in the question that the at the highest point that is y 
the total centripetal force required is provided by the weight of that object. So the weight of the object we have assumed its value to be m. So at point y the weight would be acting vertically downwards. So this would be the direction of weight and its value is mg. So what we can do here, we can simply break this weight into its two components. So one component would be towards the center of this semicircular path and the second component would be perpendicular to the first one. This ramp angle is given us as 30 degree. So this angle would also be 30 degree. When this angle is 30 degree, this angle would be 90 minus 30 and its value would be 60 degree. So the component of this weight mg towards the center of this semicircular path would be mg cos 60. And it is given in the question that during this circular motion at point y the total centipeter force required is provided by the weight. And we all know the formula for centipetal force. Let's say it's centipetal force. The formula is m v square divided by r. And this would be provided by the this component of the weight. So its value would be mg into cos 60. This would be equal to m into velocity of point y is vy so it's a square divided by the radius of the circular path and its value is r so this m and m gets cancelled so the value of vy square would come out to be the value of cos 60 is half so this whole value would be r g by 2 so what we can do we can simply put the value of vy square in this equation here so this equation would become v0 square by 2 would be equal to in place of v y square i am putting r g by 2 so this would be r g by 2 and there's two in the equation plus g into h now we can simply multiply the whole equation from 2 so this would become v square would be equal to r g by 2 plus 2 times of g h and we want to convert this equation into one of the options form. So we have to put V0 and 2GH one side. So this would become V0 square minus 2GH. This would be half R into G. So this is our option number A. So option number A is the correct one. Now coming to the other options. Option number B would not be correct because we have just found, found out the equation of this question. The option number C is that the centripetal force required at point X and Z is zero. We all know that for an object to move in a circular path, we require centripetal force. And here in this figure, the point X as well as Z is the part of that circular motion. So the centripetal force is must for an object to move in this circular path. So there would be certain value of centripetal force its value cannot be zero. So this option is the incorrect one. The fourth option is the centripetal force required is maximum at point X and Z. So from the basics of centripetal force, we know that centripetal force is required whenever there is a circular motion only. So during the whole path of this motion, that is from point A to point X to Y and Z, we know that only this x, y, z is the circular path. So the centripetal force would be required only during this semicircular path. For the rest of the motion, there would be zero centripetal force required. So we have to compare the centripetal force for point x, y, z. The formula of centripetal force is mv square. So it is directly proportional to the velocity. So at these points, we have to find out the velocities. As we all know that at point x, the velocity of the object would be higher than the velocity at point y because at point y the height is further increased due to which the kinetic energy of that object would decrease so that the total mechanical energy would be conserved. So the velocity of that object at point x would be greater than the velocity of that object at point y. 
it means the centripetal force required at point x would be greater than the centripetal force required at point y. Similarly, as we know that the point x and z are at the same height, it means the potential energy of that object at point x as well as z would be same. When the potential energy is same, it means the kinetic energy would also be same. When the kinetic energy of that object is same at point x and z, it means the velocity of point x would be equal to the velocity of point z. When the velocity of that object is same, it means the centripetal force required would also be same. So our option number D would be the correct one. That is the centripetal force required is maximum at point x and z. And this maximum is because this is the point where this velocity is maximum during this entire circular motion. So option number A and D would be the correct one. So thank you for watching. If you still have any doubt, please let me know in the comment section. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel Doubt Forum. See you in the next video. Till then take care. Bye bye.